In this screencast, I'm going to describe the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. So, important that we understand what we mean by a closed system. It, this means that there's no mass transferring across the system boundaries. So, whatever mass we start with at time zero, we have the exact same mass in the system at a later time. Also, since we're interested in applying the first law to chemical engineering type problems, we're going to ignore kinetic energy, the you know, fact that things, fluids moving inside the system, and we're also going to ignore potential energy. So the first law then in differential form says the change in internal energy, U is internal energy, the heat transfer, and some differential time when we're looking at the change in internal energy. Work, where we're talking about expansion, compression work, and we'll talk a little more about this. And then work, we're talking about shaft work. So, let's make sure these terms, this is heat transfer across the boundary. So we define our system, and if temperature one inside the system and temperature two outside the system and temperature two for example is greater than temperature one we have heat transfer in this direction and so the sign notation is important if we have heat transfer the way I've indicated Q going into the system Q is positive adding energy to the system it's positive for expansion compression work, what we're looking at is where we have, for example, a piston cylinder arrangement, and say we have a gas here, and we're pushing down this piston. So we're doing work by pushing down. So in that case, this is expansion compression work. Works greater than zero the way I've drawn it. Again, we're adding energy. Shaft work would mean, for example, we had a system with an impeller inside and this impeller is rotating, adding energy to the fluid inside the system. Again, the work for shaft work would be positive. We're adding energy to the system. Now, if we look at the integrated form of the first law, where delta U, change in internal energy between initial and the final state, Q plus work for expansion, compression, work for shaft work. And now this term, expansion compression work, is minus integral pressure external. In other words, when pushing down, it's this pressure that determines the work, if we're pushing down or if it's pushing, the gas is expanding and pushing up. The negative sign is here because if the volume decreases, so this were negative, then the work would be positive, and that's what we've looked at here, is the work is positive if we're compressing a gas. If it's reversible, and we'll talk elsewhere, other screencasts, what we mean by that, then this expansion compression work is minus integral of the pressure of, for example, the gas inside the system. But only if it's reversible that we can use the pressure in here. Otherwise, this is external pressure that is used in our calculation of work. So one of, a common one might be a constant pressure process. And then delta U, again, we're talking about closed system, Q, constant pressure, we can bring it outside the integral sign and I'm going to write this as constant pressure and reversible. So this is the pressure, for example, the gas inside delta V. And I'm doing the case where the shaft work is zero. And so I can arrange, rearrange this. Because pressure is constant, I can put it inside this delta sign. And then I can bring that term to the other side of the equation. And our definition now of enthalpy is U plus PV. So the left side is delta H. So delta H equals Q. If we have closed system, constant pressure, and 
reversible. The other case would be constant volume. So a fixed volume container. This means there's no expansion compression work. And so delta U equals Q. Now, let's look at both of these cases for constant pressure. If we had an ideal gas, delta H is CP delta T, constant heat capacity, ideal gas. CP delta T is equal to Q. Here, if we have an ideal gas, delta U is CV delta T is equal to Q.